Well, let's get you more on this evolving uh, situation in Bikita Faso. I'm joined here in the studio by France 24's Wasim Nasser. Wasim, good to have you as ever. We heard uh, the French Foreign Ministry uh, spokesperson there saying, look, we have absolutely nothing to do with mm -hmm. what's going on on the ground there. Mm -hmm. How do we explain then this double coup d'etat in less than a year in Bikita Faso? Well, actually, we are in a similar situation uh, when the, as when the first coup d'etat occurred back in uh, January, because the first coup d'etat occurred after a very big jihadi attack in November in Al the attack that led to the death of more than 70 uh, Burkina Bay military. We have the footage of this attack in uh, in uh, Inyata, and this caused many a lot of turmoil inside the military institution at the time. A few days before uh, the coup, there was also an attack by the Islamic State in Gungam because, as you know, both groups are active in Burkina Faso, which makes it a big problem. And here we see the Islamic State uh, militants a few days before the coup that led Damiba to uh, to uh, power. And 48 hours ago, we had another attack in Jibo, on the road towards Jibo. It was a humanitarian convoy or uh, alimentary uh, for food a convoy towards Jibo. And here we see it. 90 trucks were burned, knowing that Jibo is under siege by Al-Qaeda jihadis since February. So this also caused a lot of turmoil one more time in the ranks of uh, the military and we have uh, um, we have an uh, we have a map to show also uh, this humanitarian situation is which is very deteriorating here we see the road between uh, Burzanga and Jibo and the attack occurred in Gaskinde the attack that we just saw but we also have a map about the humanitarian uh, situation in uh, Burkina Faso deteriorating this map shows the situation since January 2018 up to July 20 22. The red dots are the attacks against civilians, and the green is displaced inside displaced people in Burkina Faso. So a very critical humanitarian situation, especially in region where the army is very active and the jihadis are very active. And today the, the barracks are being uh, left by the army because of the coup, but the jihadis are still there and still active as we speak. So that gives us some background as to why this uh, double uh, coup d'etat mm -hmm. is taking place. If you have just uh, uh, joined us, a quick reminder of the latest news coming in from mm -hmm. Burkina Faso. Uh, the uh, junta leader, I should say, Demiba, has agreed to step down. That news coming according to uh, religious mediators. Uh, France, as we said already, mm -hmm. Wasim, has said they're not involved in this. There are reports, though, increasing reports, that uh, Russia could be involved in this in, in some way. Not necessarily the putsch, but certainly mm -hmm. on the ground in Burkina Faso. So. Well, we have to remember that when Damiba took power, uh, Russia was saying it's good, it's a good move. And even Pirogin, the head of Wagner, said it was a good move. But Damiba stayed on, uh, uh, didn't go on the side of Russia as Mali did at the time. So the day, the, today they are saying, yes, it's a good move. Pirogin said it's a good move. But it doesn't mean that they were behind it. Knowing that they worked the, 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 the Sahelian street as a whole, and especially in Burkina Faso, through media outlets like Russia Today and like Sputnik, which has a very good audience in French in Burkina Faso, meaning like 8.8 .8 of audience for uh, Sputnik and 15.5 for Russia Today, which is very uh, significant. So there is uh, an anti-French uh, sentiment in the street that Russians are surfing on today. And you have to remember also that it's very easy to get people in the street when you talk about France. So the junta, the Capitaine Traoré, in order to forbid or to prevent Damiba from taking back power in the last hours, asked for the people to go into the street. And the best, the easiest way to make them go to the street is this sentiment against France. And we saw, for example, images of the attack against the uh, French uh, embassy in Ouagadougou, which, has very, which are very, very, very uh, telling. And even we saw yesterday, for example, uh, some military on uh, on uh, on their vehicles with the Russian uh, flags among the uh, the uh, population, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, over over uh, overrate. Uh, the capacity of the Russians in this kind of uh, situation. We see, are seeing them in Mali, and we see that there is no uh, military uh, outcome today. We look at the Sahara region as we speak. Even with French involvement and Western involvement and American involvement, the jihadis are 
uh, growing in this region, as we see. So it's not a group of mercenary which is going to uh, prevent them today from uh, going further and further. So the new junta is aware of this, and this is why they lowered their, uh, their speech uh, towards France, because they know that on the military level, Russia won't be able to deliver and Wagner won't be able to deliver, and the Malian neighbor is here to witness uh, about this. But the upcoming days, the upcoming hours will be very telling, and we will see, of course, Russians trying to capitalize on this new coup in Burkina Faso. All right, bringing us, uh, we'll see some analysis on that evolving situation in Burkina Faso. Thank, Thank you. you.